Chapter 61 Lord Balaram slays Rukmi. Shukdev Goswami said, Each of Lord Krishna's wives gave birth to ten sons who were not less than their father, having all his personal opulence. Because each of these princesses saw that Lord Achuta never left her palace, each thought herself the Lord's favorite. These women did not understand the full truth about him. The Supreme Lord's wives were fully enchanted by his lovely lotus-like face, his long arms and large eyes, his loving glances imbued with laughter, and his charming talks with them. But with all their charms, these ladies could not conquer the mind of the all-powerful Lord. The arched eyebrows of these 16,000 queens enchantingly expressed those ladies' secret intentions through coyly smiling, sidelong glances. Thus their eyebrows boldly sent forth conjugal messages. Yet even with these arrows of Cupid, and with other means as well, they could not agitate Lord Krishna's senses. Thus these women obtained as their husband the master of the goddess of fortune, although even great demigods like Brahma do not know how to approach him. With ever-increasing pleasure, they felt loving attraction for him, exchanged smiling glances with him, eagerly anticipated associating with him in ever-fresh intimacy and enjoyed in many other ways. Although the Supreme Lord's queens each had hundreds of maidservants, they chose to personally serve the Lord by approaching him humbly offering him a seat, worshipping him with excellent paraphernalia, bathing and massaging his feet, giving him pond to chew, fanning him, anointing him with fragrant sandalwood paste, adorning him with flower garlands, dressing his hair, arranging his bed, bathing him and presenting him with various gifts. Among Lord Krishna's wives, each of whom had ten sons, I previously mentioned eight principal queens. I shall now recite for you the names of those eight queen sons headed by Pradyumna. The first son of Queen Rukmini was Pradyumna, and also born of her were Charudeshna, Sudeshna, and the powerful Charudeha, along with Sucharu, Charugupta, Bhadracharu, Charuchandra, Vicharu, and Charu the tenth. None of these sons of Lord Hadi was less than his father. The ten sons of Satyabhama were Banu, Subanu, Svarbanu, Prabanu, Banuman, Chandrabanu, Brihadbanu, Atibanu the eighth, Shribanu, and Pratibanu. Samba, Sumitra, Purujit, Shatajit, Sahasrajit, Vijaya, Chitriketu, Vasuman, Dravida, and Kratu were the sons of Jambavati. These ten, headed by Samba, were their father's favorites. The sons of Nagnajiti were Vira, Chandra, Ashpasena, Chitragu, Vegavan, Vrisha, Ama, Shanku, Vasu, and the opulent Kunti. Shruta, Kavi, Vrisha, Vira, Subahu, 
Bhadra, Shanti, Darsha, and Purnamasa were the sons of Kalindi. Her youngest son was Somaka. Madra's sons were Pragosh, Gatravan, Singha, Bala, Prabala, Urdaga, Mahashakti, Saha, Oja, and Aparajita. Mitravinda's sons were Vrika, Harsha, Anala, Gridra, Vardhana, Unada, Mahamsa, Pavana, Vahini, and Kshudi. Sangramajit, Prihatsena, Shura, Praharana, Arajit, Jaya, and Subhadra were the sons of Bhadra together with Vama, Ayur, and Satyika. Diptiman, Tamratapta, and others were the sons of Lord Krishna and Rohini. Lord Krishna's son, Pradyumna, fathered the greatly powerful Aniruddha in the womb of Rukmavati, the daughter of Rukmi. O king, this took place while they were living in the city of Bojakata. My dear king, the sons and grandsons of Lord Krishna's children numbered in the tens of millions. Sixteen thousand mothers gave rise to this dynasty. How could Rukmi give his daughter to his enemy's son? After all, Rukmi had been defeated by Lord Krishna in battle and was waiting for an opportunity to kill him. Please explain this to me, O learned one, how these two inimical parties became united through marriage. Mystic yogis can perfectly see that which has not yet happened, as well as things in the past or present, beyond the senses, remote or blocked by physical obstacles. At her Svayamvara ceremony, Rukma Bhatti herself chose Pradyumna, who was the re-embodiment of Cupid. Then, although he fought alone on a single chariot, Pradyumna defeated the assembled kings in battle and took her away. Though Rukmi always remembered his enmity toward Lord Krishna, who had insulted him, in order to please his sister, he sanctioned his daughter's marriage to his nephew. O King, Bali, the son of Kritavarma, married Rukmini's young daughter, large-eyed Charumati. Rukmi gave her granddaughter Rochana to his daughter's son, Aniruddha, despite Rukmi's relentless feud with Lord Hadi. Although Rukmi considered this marriage irreligious, he wanted to please his sister, bound as he was by the ropes of affection. On the joyous occasion of that marriage, O King, Queen Rukmini, Lord Balaram, Lord Krishna, and several of the Lord's sons, headed by Samba and Pradyumna, went to the city of Bojakata. After the wedding, a group of arrogant kings, headed by the king of Kalinga, told Rukmi, You should defeat Balaram at dice. He's not expert at dice, O king, but still he's quite addicted to it. Thus advised, Rukmi challenged Balaram and began a gambling match with him. In that match, Lord Balaram first accepted a wager of 100 coins, then 1,000, then 10,000. Rukmi won this first round, and the king of Kalinga laughed loudly at Lord Balaram, showing all his teeth. Lord Balaram could not tolerate this. Next, Rukmi accepted a bet of 100,000 coins, which Lord Balaram won. But Rukmi tried to cheat, declaring, I am the winner. Shaking with anger, like the ocean on the full moon day, handsome Lord Balaram, his naturally reddish eyes even redder in his fury, accepted a wager of 100 million gold coins. Lord Balaram fairly won this wager also. But Rukmi again resorted to cheating and declared, I have won. Let these witnesses here say what they saw. Just then, a voice from the sky declared, Balaram has fairly won this wager. Rukmi is surely lying. Urged on by the wicked kings, 
Rukmi ignored the divine voice. In fact, destiny itself was urging Rukmi on, and thus he ridiculed Lord Balaram as follows. He said, You cowherds who wander about the forests know nothing about dice. Playing with dice and sporting with arrows are only for kings, not for the likes of you. Thus insulted by Rukmi and ridiculed by the kings, Lord Balaram was provoked to anger. In the midst of the auspicious wedding assembly, he raised his club and struck Rukmi dead. The king of Kalinga, who had laughed at Lord Balaram and shown his teeth, tried to run away, but the furious lord quickly seized him on his tenth step and knocked out all his teeth. Tormented by Lord Balaram's club, the other kings fled in fear, their arms, thighs and heads broken, and their bodies drenched in blood. When his brother-in-law Rukmi was slain, Lord Krishna neither applauded nor protested, O king, for he feared jeopardizing his affectionate ties with either Rukmini or Balaram. Then the descendants of Dashara, headed by Lord Balaram, seated Aniruddha and his bride on a fine chariot and set off from Bojakata for Dvarka. Having taken shelter of Lord Madhusudan, they had fulfilled all their purposes. Thus ends the 61st chapter of the 10th canto of the Srimad Bhagavatam entitled Lord Balaram slays Rukmi.